people of God, welcome to the Let's Keep Our Education Catholic Podcast. I am Sister Augustine Ambata. In the previous episodes, I shared the historical account of Catholic schools in Nigeria from the 16th century to the era of the slave trade and the second endeavor after the slave trade. This episode is a wrap of the history from 1960 to date. It was within this period that Kali schools in Nigeria experienced the most critical paradigm shift in history. This is the event of 1960 to 1975 and 1980 to date. Stay tuned to get a grasp. Going by the name, the crisis days, 1960 to 1975 was marked by crisis for Kali schools in varying degrees. They came through criticisms, intimidation, and finally the takeover of Kali schools by the government. Prior to Nigeria's independence in 1960, Kali schools were halted with the promulgation of bills and decrees of Universal Primary Education, UPE. Some of the schemes of the policy were set up to stop the expansion of Kali schools and send children to local government schools against their parents' choice. The policy also suggested an eventual complete state control of education. Then when Nigeria became an independent state in 1960, the plans to take over Kali schools became prominent. Apparently, the situation was an alarming development for Kali schools. In 1964, the Nigerian Catholic bishops wrote a protest letter rejecting the bill. The bishops argued that the content and syllabus of what should be taught in Kali schools should be their prerogative. This request was not granted. In 1967, several Catholic schools that were already in existence were still under the control of the missionaries. Shortly before the Nigerian Biafran Civil War, Archbishop Francis Arinze, who is now Francis Cardinal Arinze, took over the administrative leadership of Catholic schools from the Portuguese missionaries. Later in that year, Nigeria was struck with the Biafran Civil War that lasted until 1970. With the outbreak of the war, government strikes harder with a takeover scheme. At the end of the Biafran War in 1970, Catholic schools were forcefully taken over by the government, including schools owned by other religious denominations. What were their reasons for the takeover? They argued that it is desirable and necessary for the state to take over many schools established by the missionaries for central control and to ensure uniformity in educational standards, distribution of educational facilities, and to reduce the cost of running the schools. So for them to have an integrated or centralized education, their best approach was by intimidation as opposed to negotiation. Also, according to scholars, the government criticized Cali schools for inefficient account management, observance of several holidays, which are the church's holy day of obligation, and the allegation that the missionaries worked for Biafra during the Civil War. On the contrary, the missionaries only stayed back in the disputed territory to assist refugees, solicit relief funds from overseas to save lives, regardless of political factions, and as Jesus commanded, to perform corporal works of mercy. Well, these are just some aspects of the reasons for the takeover. I believe some of the arguments and criticisms are pertinent, and my subsequent episodes 
shall explore further Kalisku's efforts to improve for better. You know, it is not enough to take over the schools. The major tax lies in the management of the school. So after several appeals and with glaring deteriorating educational standards resulting from the government takeover of the schools, at the beginning of 1980, government started a returning schools to their owners, the missions. Meanwhile, these schools came back, dilapidated in structure and in school-wide moral values and academics. To date, the returns are still in process and Catholic schools continue to suffer the effects of the takeover. Some takeaway from the history. Let's look at some strengths of the accomplishment of the missionaries. The educational endeavor of Catholic missionaries in Nigeria was significantly remarkable. Among several factors to their success, I wish to highlight three key important areas of strength. One is on Catholic identity, two, teachers training colleges, and lastly, community school partnership engagement. In the area of Catholic identity, the focus on the mission and the supremacy of the gospel values they clearly stated their mission to evangelize and educate the people. The focus was on Catholic identity, which was largely on the faith of the learner and academic excellence. To this effect, the Christian Catholic faith flourished to a very reasonable extent. The moral values were held in high esteem and those who were educated under these missionaries had impeccable academic excellence. Secondly, to have quality Catholic educators and successors, it was imperative for them to have trained Catholic teachers for the success of the learner and the continuity of Catholic schools and her true identity. Third and finally, there was a community school partnership in the different places the missionaries established schools, they collaborated with the traditional rulers. A specific example is the case of Onicha. The traditional ruler at the time and his chiefs donated 20 hectares of land in exchange for tuition remission of their children in the Kali schools. Also, the entire community collaborated, providing support and assistance to the missionaries and more importantly, providing them with an enabling environment. So the missionaries paid attention to these three key areas, the content of instruction, which is focused on the mission, the Catholic identity, the pedagogical approach to deliver the instruction, which was the reason for the teachers training colleges and an enabling environment provided by the community. Nevertheless, they had some challenges, challenges that emanated from the host community, from the colonial government, and from the government of Nigeria. First, in places like Konicha, the community members were not very receptive in the beginning. They frowned at their traditional ruler's decisions to allow the missionaries to establish schools. These people agitated because they were predominantly farmers who relied on their sons to help them with the physical demands of farming. And they did not want them to abandon farming for foreign education. Also scholars argued that the locals were suspicious of the white man religion as they were very reluctant to denounce their African tradition. Another challenge the missionaries encountered was consistent criticism and intimidation by the colonial government and later the independent government of Nigeria. Finally was the challenge of government takeover of Catholic schools. This later challenge had for the most part lingering effect on the present day's Catholic school education. Regardless, 
we must resolutely do our bit to work towards ameliorating the challenges. All of this we shall begin to unravel in our future episodes. Don't forget that your opinion matters. So drop your comments and together we shall work to keep our education Catholic. God bless you. Thank you.